I played Pokemon White using only first form birds. While there is no shortage of amazing Pokemon in Gen 5, well, for the most part, I chose to only use flying types with a set of rules. Number one, I can only use base flying type Pokemon that can evolve, so I can't use mons like Sigilyph or Emolga. Number two, I have to play in set battle mode. And finally, number three, I can't use items in my bag whilst I am in battle. With all that said, let's get into this. I replaced Snivy for Pidove as our first mon, since Pidove is an early game bird anyways and the Snivy slot would give us the hardest time with the run. We've got two rivals and end to fight here, but they weren't hard. After the battles, I checked my ability and we ended up having super luck, which would be great since I don't imagine Pidov is going to be doing much damage late game. Oh yeah, and I name him Yestro. Not entirely sure why, but that's what I named my character when I played through Black and White for the first time, and it just kind of stuck. Second Bianca battle wasn't that much of a problem, so we went on to Striden City, only to get beaten down by Charon. We're doing this already, huh? So, his Tepic used Ember, and it burns us. Mind you, our only offensive move is special, so our damage wasn't affected, but he had an Ornberries, and we weren't doing enough damage to begin with, so we kinda went down. Second attempt through, and we made it out fine, allowing us to move on to the Striton Gym. We battled Chili since Padova's was in the Snivy slot, and I swear this gym was harder to beat when I was younger. Huh, guess I was just bad at Pokemon back then. Anyway, his Lily Pup and Pantsy would go down pretty easily and he gave us the TM for workup, which I taught to bit of immediately since that's going to be extremely helpful for our damage. Charon feels the need to test out a Pokemon after earning the first gym badge, so we humor him a little bit. But we crushed him even harder this time thanks to Bidove having learned Air Cutter. Let's go! More critical hits! Going into the Wellspring Cave to chase after Team Plasma because they stole some girls' Pokemon, we capture our next team member, Wubat, who I named Taboo because that's pretty funny to me. And yes, I did go ability hunting this time since there is absolutely no way at all that I'm running through this game with a klutzy Wubat. Wubat isn't the worst Pokemon ever, but not being able to use held items would literally be like shooting myself in the foot. So we went with its other ability, Unaware. Much better, as it ignores any stat changes in the opponent. Here in Nacrian City, N challenges us to an another battle, with a brand new team. His Pidov is first, but obviously ours is superior. Temple is next, landing a Supersonic, but not much else. And lastly, Timber, but it's a fighting type, so one air cutter did the trick, opening the way to the second gym. This gym is notorious for being hard since the Pokemon that the gym leader has are really hard to deal with at this point in the game. And my experience here wasn't any different. Lenora leads with Hurtier, who has Intimidate, a big hit to our damage since our Wubat's strongest move is Heart Stamp a physical psychic type move. Not only that, but his Hurtier hits like a damn truck. So even if we manage to get past it, we won't be looking good for the Watchog. So what can I do? About Hard Stamp, that move also has a chance to flinch the opponent every time it's used. Top it off with Hurtier being confused from confusion, and it would have about a 20% chance of being able to move each turn. With all that RNG in play, we do manage to get past it with both our Pokemon still active after the first few attempts. That doesn't last long, however, because the Watchog comes in and bites the remainder of Taboo. We did get a little bit of chip damage before our Wubat went down, though. We sent in Pidof next to a finish off Watchog with two air cutters and earned our basic badge. Onwards to the Castalia Gym. Since we've got quite a bit of ways till we reach Castalia, I figured I should use this time to tell you that if you're enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like. I'd really appreciate it. Back to the video. Alright, time to battle Berg. The bug type gym leader. From that alone, you'd think that this would be a walk in the park, right? Well, you're half right. Berg leads with a Whirlipede, who by itself isn't that much of an issue, with his poison tail being the exception. But our main problem came in Dwebble. Say hello to the bug type that's also a rock type. With both our Pokemon not particularly being known for their outstanding defenses and this thing having Smackdown? Yeah, what did you think was gonna happen? I tried everything I can think of. Setting up on Whirlipeed, crossing my fingers in the hope that he doesn't poison me, trying to land flinches with Heart Stamp. Even if we did reasonably get all of the above, his Levani would just come in and finish off the rest of what was still standing. Er, flying. Until multiple attempts later, we did get lucky enough to eke out a win with high rolls and being super careful with Roost on Yes. That netted us the Insect Badge. Our next destination is the Mbasa City Gym. But before that, we have another rival battle with Bianca in the root gate. But before that, we pick up the Eviolite. Eviolite is an amazing held item that boosts the defense of any non-evolved Pokemon that can evolve 
by 50%, so it's perfect for this run. Bianca and Sharon wanted to battle us next, but they were nothing compared to Berg. Yestro's hard carrying this team, bro. Continuing on our way to Nabasa, we visit a house and pick up the team for Dig, because the next gym is an electric type one and we'll be picking up a mon that can learn it. Welcome to the most game changing part of this run the desert resort. This is where we can pick up the Plume Fossil. The Plume Fossil revives our next team member, Arkin. Arkin is the whole reason that birds were the theme of this run. While both P-Dov and Wubat do not have a single base stat over 75, Arkin will blow your socks off, boasting a base 112 physical attack stat along with 70 speed. The only catch? Its signature ability, Defeatist. If you thought 112 attack and 70 speed sounded good, get ready to put your socks back on because as soon as this thing is under half HP, both of those stats are cut in half. Couple that with its abysmal defensive capabilities and you end up with a glass cannon. And hey, if you thought I was doing this challenge without this broken mon, you're as high as a kite. Not to mention it is literally the first bird Pokemon. So that's enough reason for me. Oh yeah, while we were there, I also picked up the TM for Rock Tomb to teach to Arkin as well, and named him Wing. At Nimbasa City, before we can go to the gym, we've got to ride the Ferris wheel with N, and he challenges us to a battle. The battle was... oddly difficult. Most of his team wasn't too hard to deal with, aside from his Darmaka knocking out Yestro, but then Sigilyph came out and everything just went to sh Second try though, and we make it out not fine, mind you but we survived. We are at quite possibly the biggest roadblock in this run. I'm not gonna extend this for longer than it needs to be. All you need to know is that I have a team of flying type Pokemon and this gym is entirely electric type. This one gym leader battle dead took me half an hour to beat. The amount of luck and overleveling that I needed to win this battle was absolutely stupid. Anyways, before I drag this part out any longer, we win and I get to move on with my life. And then Charon wants to feel some loss again. I gave him that and he proceeded to speak something about his dreams, or whatever. The Driftvale Drawbridge is where we will grab our next Pokemon, Ducklet. I just wanted a water type Pokemon to do with rock types really, and Unova's unusually picky with flying types, so this was the only one I could get to help with that. I named him Quaxley because that is literally knockoff Quaxley. Yes, Ducklet came first, but look at him. Alright, moving on to the Driftvale Gym. The next gym leader, Clay of the Ground Type. Here's what our team's looking like. I didn't mention any of these during our time in Nimbasa, but Yastro has Air Slash and Wings got Acrobatics now. Quite possibly the biggest buff to this challenge. A base 110 flying type move if we're not holding an item by the time it's used. Keep that last part in mind for later. You may think this gym would be- <sighs> Okay, yeah, you get it. We're flying type, they're ground type, but hey, this is somehow really hard. So, Croc Rug isn't a big deal apart from it having torment, making this a little annoying. The real problem came in the form of Excadrill. It has Rock Slide. Again, we are birds that hate rocks. I just had to wait for it to miss two in a row while Wing dug multiple holes in his plan. After that slog of RNG, we grounded Clay and got our Quake Badge and the TM for Bulldoze, which I taught to Wing to give him a one turn ground type move. We've got another battle with Bianca here, and to her credit, she did pose a bit of a challenge. Only because of that fat Musharna though. Jesus! But aside from that, the rest of her team was easy as pie. She then gave us the HM for Fly, essential for this mono bird run. At the Charstone Cave, N wants to battle us again. I've gotta say, I really like how in every battle you have with N, he has a different team. It directly correlates to the story and how he sees Pokemon as friends and thinks it's wrong to encapsulate them in Pokeballs. I'm only saying this here because this battle is easy, couldn't you tell? So there's a lot of filler here before the next gym with the whole Celestial Tower that has one of the best soundtracks in Pokemon, but I'm just gonna skip straight ahead to the gym leader. You'd figure that since this is a flying type gym, I'd use Wing to straight up dominate it, but I just decided, nah, I won't use him. Funnily enough, Yestro just solo carried the entire battle on his shoulders, tagging Taboo at the very end. A pretty easy six gym battle to get our jet badge. We've got to go through Twist Mountain to get to Icira City now. On our way, Charon stops us in our tracks to battle us, with a somewhat decent team no less. He leads with Unpheasant, but our Padov is 100% superior, though it did chip off a bit of our HP. Next up is Pignite, and I gotta admit, I never knew that this Pignite held leftovers. In all my years playing this game, I never picked up on that. You'll learn something new every day, I guess. After that was Lipard, and I hard swapped to Quaxley. I don't know why, I just did. But, uh, after being hit with Torment, Quaxley kinda just sat there and suffered for a bit before going down. We sent in Wing to finish off the Lightbird. Charon's last Mon is Simusage, who, I'll be honest, was doing a lot more than I expected him to, 
but luckily we still had Taboo in the back with full HP, helping us win the battle. Barely. Then this old man jumps off a cliff when the stairs were literally to the right, giving us the HM for Surf. With our newly acquired Surf HM, I wanted to go to the Mistralton Cave to grab the TM for Rock Slide, since it is infinitely better than Rock Tomb. Plus, it gives us the chance to flinch the opponent if we outspeed them. Oh, here's the part where I mentioned my weird and obscure knowledge in this game. Yeah, this rock right here has no collision detection. Don't know why, it just doesn't. Anyways. Ice-type gem. Can I just say that Cryogonal is a b to deal with? Not only does it outspeed most, if not every member on the team, it also has Ice Beam by this level. The rest of Bryson's Pokemon were more or less alright for me to deal with, but that damn Cryogonal, man! Anyhow, my Cryogonal problems aside, the rest of the battle was a hop and a rock slide away for both his Vanillish and Bear Tick, earning us the Freeze Badge. From here, it's just a bunch of story stuff and non-important battles, so let's skip ahead to the next Bianca battle. Surprisingly enough, this was somehow on par with the time I had with Elisa. Her team is nowhere near as frightening though. It's just full of really hard hitters, and the sheer fact that my mods don't have any bulk. This battle unironically made me go back to Driftvale to actually pick up the TM for Scald, which in hindsight, would have been really helpful if I had it earlier. <clears throat> With a little perseverance and luck in getting skull burns, we eventually make it through and make our way to the final gym. At the site of the final gym of black and white, this one specializes in dragon types. But before we go in there, we catch our final Pokemon for the run, Rufflet. I didn't think this far as to which version exclusive bird I wanted here, but I would have preferred Vullaby, but I just wanted to play white instead of black. Sue me. We need this thing NA because, look at it, it, it literally radiates American energy all over. So yeah, that's our last Pokemon in the run. We've got every flying type in this game that can evolve, which caps our team at 5 Pokemon. Now is the time to battle the last gym leader. This is probably going to be some epic battle that will be recorded in history books for many generations. Oh, it's over. Well, that stinks. Taboo and Wing just kind of carried the battle and won it for us without too much of a problem. And we can move on to the Pokemon League to win this all. Before that though, Chern wants to square up, but unfortunately enough for this Pokemon champion wannabe, he puts up less of a fight than even Bianca. You should probably go back to your day job, Chern. Onwards to the victory road. You know, I usually ignore this part of challenges, but the badge check gates in black and white are so damn cool. Every gate you walk through adds an instrument to the main Victory Road theme, and it gives concrete purpose to every gym badge that you've gone up to this point. Ah, it's so cool! We are finally here at the Pokemon League, ready to take on the Elite Four. Actually, not at all. I decided to start with Chantal, since she neither has much of an advantage or disadvantage against us, as to sort of test the waters. And, uh, we certainly got washed. I'll admit, it was a little stupid of me to think that we could take on these guys at an even level. But you know what? I tried. I went to grinding, and now our roster is at level 55. Let's try this again. Uh, we were struggling to beat only half of her team. Chantal's Kofagugius and Jellicent just wall my team so perfectly, it's actually kind of amazing. I went back to grinding, and with our team at level 59, we actually got the win this time. On to the next Elite Four member. I chose Grimsley as my next opponent, but after seeing how our team basically stood no chance against what he has, I switched gears to go fight Caitlyn first. Did you know that Caitlyn actually showed up in the game before Black and White? She's shown up in the 4th Gen Battle Frontiers in the Battle Castle. The more you know. Anyways, back to Gen 5, she leaves with a Reuniclus that has Thunder. We're screwed. Also, as if this Reuniclus wasn't enough for you, the rest of her team also has some form of electric or ice type coverage in their moveset. Okay, this is an uphill battle. I went to level 61 to see if that would help a bit, and went back. I led with NA to deal with the Reuniclus, and dealt a big chunk of damage to it with strength, but got one-shotted by Thunder. I sent Wing in next to finish it off. Sigilyph is next. It didn't get to do much of anything at all since it went down to our one rock slide. Gothitelle was third, but she just ended up wasting her turns setting up Calm Minds, so two acrobatics did the trick. Rumasharna was a bit fat, but after a while, it eventually gave in. That leaves us with two of the Elite Four remaining. I wanted to leave Marshall for last since I figured he'd be the easiest to beat, so back to Grimsley. Scrafty and Crocodile are absolutely no problem whatsoever. This Lipert and Bisharp though. Never did I think that the gimmick of his Pokemon having both genders was going to be a problem, but this Lipert's attract is killing me! Attract makes the opponent infatuated with the user if they are the opposite gender. The probability of it activating? 50%. 
It's basically confusion without us hitting ourselves, but it lasts forever. After we finally manage to get past that, we get stuck on Bisharp, purely because we don't have anything to hit it with, and it can spam Night Slash and just win. After a few times of trying, I just gave Wing Bulldoze again, and just that alone made the biggest difference and gave us the win. Last Leaf remembers Marshall, but you already know how this will go. We're a team of flying types, of course this wasn't hard in the slightest. Coming down to the final couple battles in the challenge now. Let's go! Versus N! But before that, the game forces us to catch Zekrom, and believe me, I tried to just knock it out, but he simply just doesn't accept it. So yeah, we have to catch it and just waste turns at the start of these battles. For real this time! Versus end. He leads with Rush Ram and a couple of rock slides from Wing utterly shit on it. Then we proceed to get rolled by his Thunderbolt in Kling Clang. Alright dude, yep, thanks. Really love to see that happen. Okay, let's grind a bit. Level 66. Right, so that didn't help much. This team just feels like it's made to deal with flying type Pokemon, and it would have been worse if I'd been playing Black this entire time because he would have had Zekrom. I just didn't think that far ahead though. Top that off with how he has three more Pokemon that have stabs that are super effective on flying types, and yeah, it's a recipe for disaster. His Vanillix was never an issue due to Rock Slide though, and granted, those stab moves on his Karakos and Archeops is Stone Edge, which does have a decent chance of missing. With a bit of bullshit luck on our side, we can get through this completely unscathed. Oh, would you look at that! His Archeops doesn't touch us at all, and his Zoroark is small beans in comparison to what we had to fight against before, so we plow through that and win the battle against M. Okay, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this one. The Getsus battle was impossible for where I was at. There was no way for me to beat him whatsoever. His whole team is filled with super hard hitters that my team just can't survive. My Bishop problem comes back to spite me, then his Bouffalant and Electros both hit like freight trains because they have Wild Charge. And even if I somehow manage to get past them, his Seismitoad comes out and by then I only have Wing left. And I spent 5 plus attempts doing the same thing over and over again. But in the end, it just seems impossible to be with my team. Is that really it? Are we going to give up this close to victory? No, of course not. There was just no way I was going to beat that with the way we were. So I granted the entire squad to 75, gave them proper natures for their appropriate strengths, and maxed out their EVs, but even that was barely enough. Taboo took out Kofagrigus with Psychic. Quaxley finished off his Bisharp, but went down to Bufalant. We left that kill, Electros, and Hydreigon to NA. Seismitoad knocks him out though. Then, Yestro finishes off his last Pokemon to avenge the rest of the team and wins the challenge. And that was how I beat Pokemon White with only first form birds.